it's recorded. So in the formula that you are seeing for the flux of urea, the denominator locks the diffusion path, which is Z1 minus Z2. This is where we were cut a while ago. So as for the diffusivity of urea, we can get that from table 6.4, that's 2. So I will show to you the table. So this is our table 6.4, that's 2. And from the table, you will be able to see the corresponding diffusivity. Now, of the diffusivities that are given here, which one are we going to choose? The typical diffusivities of solutes and dilute biological cells in aqueous solution. Now, we look for the temperature that is based, that is stated in the problem, and that's 278. Everything here is 278. The percentage by weight is 1.01 .01 weight percent. So it's not here, among here. So the value that we will use will be somewhere, our solute is urea. If you can see class, our solute is urea, our gel is agar. And we're going to look for the weight percent that is comparable to what we have in the problem. Actually, it's good because the problem really gives the one that is stated here in the table. It's 1.05 weight percent gel solution. If it's not stated here, then though I'm not certain if the properties here are linear in relationship, you can just interpolate. So if, for example, the weight percent is 2 and it's not found in here, you have only one, three, and five. Then you just uh, interpolate the value of the corresponding diffusivity. The temperatures here are all at 278. So that's the temperature also stated in the problem. So you just have to read directly here the corresponding diffusivity. Because in our problem, what is given is that we have a gel which is 1.05 weight percent agar in water solution this is the temperature so this is our diffusivity and this is the diffusivity that we're going to use in our problem so i will share a new one so based on our formula we can place in here the diffusivity of 0.727 times 10 raised to negative 9. Now, as for the concentration, I will just read the problem to you. The urea concentration in the first solution is 0.2 gram mole per liter. If this 0.2 gram mole per liter is converted into the SI units of kilogram mole per cubic meter, the value would still be the same. So this will be our concentration two, our rather our concentration one, the 0.2 gram kilogram mole per cubic meter, and our concentration two is zero. You may wonder why it's the, our uh, shall I say concentration at 0.1 and at 0.2 it's zero concentration. We have to understand that your urea is going to diffuse through our membrane, the agar water solution, to the other container which does not contain any urea. So the initial concentration is actually the one that is driving the mass transfer because it's the only compartment in the two compartments that has the presence of urea. The second compartment does not have any urea. So this 0.2 is already kilogram mole per cubic meter. We need always to convert the units into SI since your diffusivity here has a unit of meter squared per second, which is also an SI. Then the next would just be a substitution of the length of the bridge. And that's the 0.04 meter length of the bridge. So this is 0.04. There's no need for us to convert in here because this is already in meters. And this is it. This is already the very short solution to the problem of 
your our urea and water diffusing through a biological system of agar and water. So your answer is 3.63 times 10 raised to negative 9. Okay? Um, of course, the unit is kilogram mole urea per second per square meter. So this is our flux of urea. Okay, so I think uh, the solution for this problem is done already and we go to the next. Wait. So we're now ready to go to diffusion in solids. So we're done with diffusion in gases and liquids. Now we go to diffusion in solids. So if, again, if you're trying to ask what's the essence of having to learn diffusion through solids or in solids, when in, in fact, if we're going to think, even if we're not engineers, we're just common people, we'll always think of the rate in which, if you're going to compare the rate in which a solid or a uh, a liquid or a gas is going to uh, diffuse to a solid is never comparable to the rate in which it's going to diffuse to another gas or liquid. But still, it's very important because in the case of the process, for example, of leaching, we're in... Uh, a particular preferential, a, a particular solvent is going to preferentially dissolve a solute in the solid matrix in the process of leaching, then that particular process will not uh, in any way occur if you don't know the process of diffusion. Before a solvent can take out a solute in the leaching process, it first needs to diffuse through the solid matrix. The matrix consisting of the solute that it needs to take out or dissolve and that particular what we call inert solid B which will not in any way be affected by the diffusion of that particular solvent. And that is just in the case of leaching. Or in the case, for example, in the day-to-day -day activity, if you are a coffee drinker, how will you be able to sip the nice taste of coffee if diffusion will not occur in the first place from the liquid phase to the solid uh, in the case of the coffee granules or the coffee beans or those that need to, uh, shall I say, uh, what's this term? I forgot. In a cook paganisha, what is this nyani in coffee? Wherein they're not drinking instant coffee, they are. Uh, they're using this coffee maker. What is that? What's the process, Gane? It's, what's the term? I forgot the term. You need, the liquid water needs to diffuse through the grind. Uh, very small, minute, uh, solid coffee granules. That way, it can take out the, the flavor of the coffee. Uh, in the coffee maker, I forgot the term. I forgot the term. Anyway, that's it. But the most important thing that I can cite here as an example in diffusion to solids is in the case really of leaching. You want to leach out something in the solid uh, using a liquid solvent. And most of the time, it's really liquid that is leaching out something from the solid matrix. Now, in terms of this particular topic of diffusion through solids, I hope you can see my slide. We have this particular formula. Actually, this particular formula is similar to the formula for diffusion in liquids wherein one is stagnant or non-diffusing and only one is diffusing through the non-stagnant uh, phase, liquid phase. This formula is TAB times the concentration gradient divided by the path for diffusion to occur. Now, for solubility of a gas in a solid, so if you want to know how soluble is a gas in a given solid, the formula is S. So the uh, unit for this S is cubic meter measured at STP per cubic meter solid ATM per ATM. And this S is to be multiplied to the partial pressure of the gas in ATM 
And this is a constant that needs to be used as a divisor, the 22.414 cubic meter. This is an STP per kilogram mole of A. So the corresponding answer to this will be kilomole or kilogram mole of A per cubic meter of the solid. That's the solubility or that's how soluble is your gas in a given solid. Now in this particular part here of the slide, I have cut that portion in Jan Kuplis which explains what is this S and what are the things that you see in this formula. So the solubility of the gas, which is uh, the solute A here, in solid is usually expressed as S, having a cubic meter solute at STP, standard temperature and pressure of 0 degrees Celsius and 180 M, per cubic meter of solid per 80 M partial pressure of A. Also, this S can have a unit of cubic centimeters still at STP per ATM per cubic centimeter of the solid. So this would be the corresponding set of units if it is CGS. If it's a SI, that would be a cubic meter per cubic meter of solid per ATM pressure. Now to convert this to concentration in C sub A in the solid, which will have a unit of kilomole A per cubic meter, the one that I have shown to you a while ago on the other side, you have this particular formula. So you will use a 22.414 in the denominator as a constant divisor if the unit that will be, uh, the final units that will be uh, produced is kilomole A per cubic meter. If the final units that should be produced is gram mole per cubic centimeter, then it should be 22,414. So this one is just changed to, you take out the dot and that's it. You have 22,414 for your denominator. As for the flux, this is still the flux. As for the concentration, this would be the formula that you will be using in determining the concentration or the solubility of the gas in your given solid. Now, here's a sample problem. Actually, there are two sample problems here. One is very, very, shall I say, uh, you can relatable, it's relatable, especially when we are into uh, making sure that the shelf life of medicines or anything that we are uh, taking in to address any elements in our bodies have to be preserved. Otherwise, if there's a corresponding amount of gas in excess of what is tolerable inside the packaging, then the thing inside there will not have a shelf life in which it is designed to have. Or shall I say, if there's moisture coming in, if there's more oxygen that has diffused into your packaging material than it ought to have, then the shelf life is not the shelf life that it's supposed to have. That's in terms of the second sample. But this one is in the case of hydrogen, um, shall I say, diffusing through rubber. So hydrogen diffusing through rubber. So a gas hydrogen at 17 degrees Celsius and at this particular partial pressure so this is already the partial pressure of hydrogen and this is your hydrogen a the solute a is diffusing through a membrane of vulcanized neoprene rubber and the thickness of which is 0.5 mm now the pressure of h2 on the other side of neoprene is zero so we expect that there's no hydrogen on the other side so if this is our illustration for this problem the in, in this side, in side one, wherein you have the initial concentration here, the partial pressure is 0 0.010 atmosphere. And in this side, the partial pressure is zero. We don't have hydrogen in here. So that is why hydrogen is to diffuse through this rubber to transfer to the other side because of the difference in concentration or partial pressure specifically because we're talking of gases. Now calculate the steady state flux. So that would be Na, that would be N of H2, assuming that the only resistance to diffusion is in the membrane. So the only thing that offers resistance to diffusion, this is the direction, is the membrane itself. Uh, the solubility S of H2 gas in neoprene at 17 degrees Celsius is 0 0.051 cubic meter. 
This is measured at STP of 0 degrees Celsius and 180M. So we are just interested at these units, 0 0.051 cubic meter per cubic meter of solid per ATM. That's the solubility of, A, of H2, which is S. And its diffusivity is also given uh, in here, 1.03 times 10 raised to negative 10 meters squared per second. And it's also measured at the temperature stated here. So if you're going to go back to the formula, let's see what we have already. This is our formula. So we have the DAD and we have the concentration and we have here the, the path. So we will just have to look for this. You just need to look for this. CA2 is already zero and your CA1 will be computed based on the S that was given, but it needs to be converted to concentration because your S is the solubility of your gas in the unit stipulated, which is, in this problem, that is cubic meter, or cubic meter of solid per ATM. So there's a need for us to convert this S to concentration. So we'll go to the board and check how we're going to do that. Okay, so... Another problem and another solution. So our solution for this will still be following the same formula as the previous one. Oh, sorry. So we have Na. And we have here Z2 minus Z1. And we have here Ca2 minus, Ca1 minus Ca2. By the way, when, when you see this formula, CA1 is always the point where diffusion is to start. And CA2 is the point in which it's going to, it's the receiving end. Well, this is the starting end, point one. So the DAB is already given. Uh, what's the DAB? The DAB, the diffusion is given to be uh, 0.727. No, that's not, I'm talking about the H2 diffusing through neoprene rubber. So in this case, our DAB is 1.0. This is 1.03 times 10 raised to negative 10. By the way, this is given in the problem. And we divide it by the diffusion path. And it says here that your neoprene rubber is 0.5 mm thick. So this is 5 times 10 raised to negative 4. If we will divide by 1000, so it would be 5 times 10 raised to negative 4. And we need to determine the CA1. I'll just place it in here. That way we will not have any more a different solution. This is zero anyhow. So your CA1 is to be converted to, is to be converted from the S formula. So your S formula is 0 0.051. So I will read from the problem where I'm taking the 0 0.051. It says here, the solubility of H2 in gas, the H2 gas in neoprene is, 0 0.51 or 0 0.051 cubic meter per cubic meter solid per ATM. So this is the value I'm writing here. And based on the formula, I need to convert it to concentration by multiplying it to the partial pressure that is stated in the problem. So statement number one says that the partial pressure is 0 0.010 ATM. So I will place here 0 0.010 that's the partial pressure. There's no need to convert because this one in the first place, the 0 0.051 is cubic meter per cubic meter solid per ATM. So they will just cancel each other. So this is the S multiplied to the partial pressure of A. And we're going to divide it by A constant of 22.414. This is zero. And that's it. So you just have to multiply everything, divide 
And the corresponding answer for the flux is 4.69 times 10 raised to negative 12. So this would be kilomole of H2. H2 is going to diffuse through neoprene rubber. So S per square meter or S per meter squared. That's it. That's it. Okay. So this is the flux of uh, the rate in which hydrogen is going to diffuse to a solid, which is rubber. Now I'll go to the next sample problem. This is the one that we solved. We have another one here, uh, which will now be using diffusivity permeabilities, specifically permeability and diffusivity together. So uh, if you're going to have a formula for flux, the rate in which a particular substance is to diffuse to another, which considers already permeability, that formula will be this. So the diffusivity in here, the diffusivity in here is used in determining the permeability. So we have the permeability in here. We have the partial pressure of A at point 0.1 and point 0.2. And we still have this constant 22.414 and we have the length of path here. The permeability replaces this one. It could be seen in the formula above that these two were gone and it's in its place we have seen the P sub N. So your P sub N is solved using DAB times S. Now for some common substances, we have these permeabilities in here in the uh, one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth column of the table in Jan Kuklis. Uh, displaying diffusivities and permeabilities in solids of the following gases. So these gases are our solute diffusing to the indicated solid B. So our solute is A and our solid is B. In our problem, in the next problem that we're going to solve, we're going to check what's our A and what's our B. So actually in here you see already the DAB. And you have the solubility. And it's a given that if you multiply these two, you will have the permeability here, the second to the last column, based on the formula. Yes? The share, miss. Oh, my. Anyway, wait. Hmm. Where, why, what, what, why? Excuse me, huh? I hope you can see it now. So, uh, going back to what I'm saying, what I'm showing to you is a formula that will solve for the rate in which solute A, a gas, is going to diffuse to a given solid based on permeability. And permeability here, as I have said a while ago, replaces the two uh, parameters in the equation D sub AB or your molar diffusivity and your S, okay? The solubility of your gas in the solid which was actually in the previous formula was converted into concentration. That way we can use a formula similar to that in liquids. So it, this was changed into concentration. In here there's no need because uh, it's stated here that you can use permeability in lieu of the DAB and S product. Now I was saying a while ago that in the table here, in the fourth and in the fifth column, if you multiply these two, you will have the corresponding answer here for the permeability. It's because DAB times the solubility is your permeability. Uh, in the, it is very important that you get to know the solute in the problem and the solid in which it's going to diffuse to. Because you're going to use that information here in the first two columns. Uh, it is a given that in the problem, if you're going to use this table, 
the temperature that is written here is the same temperature that is in the problem. If not, uh, we will have another problem because we don't have other temperatures than the ones in here in the table. If it's a different temperature and if there's a need for it to be corrected uh, based on what uh, the information that is stated here in the table, then the problem should mention that as well. For your uh, handbook, if this one is present in the handbook, should state that as well. A correction factor for a value for permeabilities or diffusivities other than the temperature stipulated here. So we'll have a sample problem, the second sample problem on this slide. Now a polyethylene film, uh, 0.15 uh, millimeter stick is being considered for use in packaging a pharmaceutical product at 30 degrees Celsius, so slightly higher than the normal room temperature. If the partial pressure, if the partial pressure of oxygen outside is 0.21 atm, and inside the package it is 0.01 atm. Calculate the diffusion flux of O2 at steady state. So uh, we want to use a packaging film that will not increase the presence of oxygen inside because in a certain packaging of anything, there has to be a there, there has to be a maintained value for partial pressures of oxygen or partial pressure of air inside the package. Otherwise, the one, the thing that is inside the package will deteriorate faster uh, than the one that is designed to, or it will alter the shelf, right, shelf life of that particular material. So it's important. So calculate the diffusion of O2 in this case. Partial pressure is this outside and inside is this one. You're going to use the permeability data that I have shown. And you are to assume that the resistances to diffusion outside the film and inside are negligible. So the only resistance to diffusion is the film itself. Okay? Now, we will, I will stop sharing here. And go to our board. Okay. For this problem of, I need to have a copy of the problem of hydrogen uh, diffusing through is this hydrogen? It's oxygen diffusing through the polyethylene uh, film that is recommended to be used as packaging material. Now. The formula that we are to use is the one that I have shown to you in the slide. So I would like to start with that particular formula. If I'll, I'll be disconnected, we'll just reconnect. So Na is equal to the permeability P sub M, which replaces the diffusivity and the S. We have the partial pressure at 0.1 and 0.2 for, in this case, oxygen. And we have this constant in the denominator. And we have the diffusion path, length. Okay. So this is our formula in this case. Now from table, from the table that I have shown to you, so we are to look in the first column, O2, and it's going to uh, diffuse to solid polyethylene. So I'll go back to the table so you would know how to use it. Just let me know if you cannot see the table. So this is our table. We are going to look for the solid polyethylene. So this is the second column here. And the solid that is going to diffuse to polyethylene is oxygen. So this is our solute. Now um, we are going to look for its permeability. So here on the second to the last column, you can see the permeability of polyethylene uh, with respect to solute A, which is O2. So 4.17 times 10 raised to negative 12. And that's the thing that I'm going to substitute in here. Okay, so we will skip this one. Okay. 
Okay. So using the value that I have pointed out to you, so we will have 4.17 times 10 raised to negative 12. Then we have to use the partial pressure that is stated in the problem. So let me go back to the problem. It says there that the partial pressure of O2 outside is 0.21. And inside, that's 0 0.01. So again, look at here. Your PA1 is the starting point of the diffusion. This is the partial pressure. And it's going to diffuse to that area where there is less partial pressure or less concentration for oxygen. So that's 0 0.01. 0 0.21 minus 0 0.01. And you will have here 22.414. And we multiply that to the thickness of the film. So the thickness of the film is 0.15 mm. So you should divide that by 1000. So we add three zeros more to make it in meters. So now that's it. You already have the molar flux of oxygen through uh, polyethylene. Is this polyethylene? Yeah, polyethylene. So your answer for this will be 2.480 times 10 raised to negative 10 kilomole per second per square meter. Now, if you want, if you want a lesser diffusion of what's in outside to the inside of whatever that we want to package, then we are to use a material that is of less permeability. So in this case, this is the flux if we will use polyethylene. So among the choices that you have here for packaging material, let me go back to the... So polyethylene is this one and you have O2 here. You cannot use rubber for packaging of pharmaceuticals. So probably you can have nylon oxygen, diffusion to nylon. You can use something made of nylon. Then you can see that its permeability is a lot lesser than that of polyethylene. So you may think of using nylon as the primary material for packaging of that particular pharmaceutical product, whatever it may be. That way, the diffusion of O2 is controlled from the outside to the inside. That is if the goal is really to control the diffusion rate of oxygen to the inside part of the packaging. So that's more on uh, making sure that shelf life is achieved whatever is a design shelf life of the pharmaceutical product because this one is higher than this. So this is how you make use of the information in this table to, let's say, uh, suggest a partic particular packaging material to be used for a particular thing that is to be packaged. So based on permeability. So if you are to choose, since we only have, we cannot... Uh, we only have choices of nylon, polyethylene, and rubber in this case. Rubber, will, you should never use rubber for pharmaceuticals. So we only have these two, polyethylene and nylon. And I think nylon is the best choice in this case because of its permeability, which is lesser than that of polyethylene. Okay, so we will go now to the last sample problem on solids. And this is diffusion in porous solids that depends on structure. So diffusion of liquids, we have diffusion of liquids in solids with porous structure. And we also have diffusion of gases to these porous solids. Now our formula is this one, and it has new parameters as you can see. So aside from the molar diffusivities and the concentration and the diffusion path length, we have the E which is in this case, that's the open void fraction, the total volume of the void divided by the volume of the entire thing. That's the void fraction. And we have here the tau factor. We call this the tortosity. This is called the tortosity. Tortosity. So it's a factor that corrects the path 
uh, when actually in real thing, the path is not just Z2 minus Z sub 1. What's the essence of this? Uh, let me go back to this illustration so that it would be easier for you to understand. The path normally for diffusion in porous solids is not a straight line like this one, something like this or something like this. Sometimes the diffusing material has to pass through voids which have a... It has to look for voids in which it's going to pass through until it reaches the other end where it's going to diffuse too. So the diffusion path, which is just C1 minus Z2 or Z2 minus C1, is not actually just C1 minus Z2 or Z2 minus C1. It has to have a correction factor because the path that the molecule that needs to diffuse from one side to another has to take is not actually just C1 and Z2. It's even longer than that because it has to look for voids, as I've said. It has to find spaces where it can pass through in the case of porous solids. So that's the purpose of the tortosity in the formula here. Uh, in process control, we call this the tau. But in here, this is referred to as the tortosity in unit ops. That's a correction factor if the path that is, uh, that is traversed by your diffusing solute A is not just Z2 minus Z1. So if it's a longer path, then you have a multiplier here. For inner type solids, the tau can vary from about 1.5 to 5. So this multiplier can be 1.5 to 5. Often, the terms are combined into an effective diffusivity. What does that mean? Uh, this one is replaced by, or rather, the epsilon, the d sub ab, and the tau is replaced by da effective or the effective diffusivity. So the effective diffusivity times the change in concentration or the difference rather in concentration over the diffusion path will be the same as the original because you just replace these three, the product of these two on top and the tortosity by the effective diffusivity. But still, your molar flux or your flux is still in terms of the generic form is still the same. <clears throat> Diffusivity, the difference in concentration over diffusion path. Okay? When we talk about gases, we just change, of course, concentrations to partial pressure. And we have the introduction of RT in the denominator. When we're talking about gases, uh, unless otherwise we have a formula that allows us to convert uh, a particular representation to concentration, just like in this case that I've shown to you a while ago, this one.